all around, and then just fed in the collapse. Until a few months ago, Bono Hine and Whittle had never met. Today, Bono Hine is a top scientist for the American government, still working on jets. Whittle, who had suffered cruelly at the hands of officialdom, asked his old rival what had been the German attitude. So it was our first flight. was important to the German Air Ministry because now they could uh, really strongly advocate uh, and uh, push uh, the overall development with this larger means forward. We were trying to get money from the administration. We couldn't get it. You couldn't get it, no. It's an uh, intelligence report that the British are now having a turbojet airplane in a sort of an experimental state. Uh, around, I would say, oh, I believe 1943, it came to the intelligence table to yeah. 943, 944, on the time. The engine takes in its air chair in the, uh, the double intake of the compressor, and it's compressed into these uh, pipes, which are known as uh, technically as diffusers, but which we always refer to as the elephant's trunk, into these combustion chambers where the air was heated, and uh, then it's exhausted through the turbine, driving the compressor, and then the balance of the energy in the hot air provided the propelling jet. Of course, best of all was the stunningly simple idea. One rotating part producing 20,000 horsepower instead of those dreadful reciprocating engines. I remember Whistle telling me that any attempt to increase their efficiency would just be more and more moving parts. And here was this overwhelming idea to substitute one spinning turbine for the dreadful aero engines of the time, which were hundreds of reciprocating parts moving about and wasting all their energy. In 1941, Whittle at last had a chance to really test out his fear. His engine was installed in a specially built aeroplane constructed by the Gloucester Aircraft Company. It was called the Gloucester Whittle E-28, the E standing for experimental. To preserve secrecy on the journey to Cranwell, a dummy propeller was fitted to the aircraft's nose. But official attitude towards the engine was still cool, as another member of Whittle's team, Johnny Johnson, recalled. I was responsible for the arrangements getting the aeroplane up to Cranwell and flying on the course. Cranwell police were responsible for the actual security and so on, but I had a general responsibility for issuing passes and so on. And about, I think, a week before the first night, I telephoned to the